Your professional title, what do you prefer? Soul coach is someone is something that I've been saying recently. Well, I used to call you my spiritual life, life coach. Life coach is another one. That's more of like my street name, right? <laughs> <laughs> this week on Dreamcatchers. <laughs> Blood me. Dream this one. That is, oh my god, that is. I was going to say, we're all barefoot. Barefoot, barefoot. People aren't sick in the body, they're sick in the mind first. Right. I found that my gift was actually bringing people from good to great. What people don't understand is when we actually connect with ourselves and the earth, we can feel everyone all the time because yeah. we're one organism. Yeah. Right. March of 2008, the first time that I sat with one of my plant master teachers, Ayahuasca. Okay, what was that like? It wasn't like anything. No? Nothing, nothing like it in the whole world. <laughs> Welcome back, dreamers. We're here with another very special episode of the Dreamcatchers, and we are joined with Brianna Lynn, who I'm so excited to interview. Tell us a bit about this space and where we are. Yeah, so we are in Santa Monica, California. We are in the Parkhurst Building, which is one of the oldest buildings in Santa Monica. It was built in 1919. And I wanted a safe space for people that I'm working with, either one-on-one -on -one or in groups, to come to and feel like they were out of the city for a little bit. So can you just tell us quickly a little bit about because um, I can't refine your title at all. You've got so many gifts. What are you known as? Yeah. Your so it really depends on who I'm speaking to. I don't work necessarily with people who are in deep trauma. I work with people whose lives are okay. People specifically who know that they have a blueprint, know that they have a specific gift. They've known that they're different since they were young, but they're stopping themselves. And, and how do you do that? What does like, a session of that look like? What we've developed is something that we're calling the soul of NLP or soul NLP coaching. And really what this is based in is taking the best practices and principles that we've seen with our one-on-one -on -one clients and our groups that have really allowed people to push the needle in their life, make instant change in their life, make quick change that feels in integrity, that's not forcing, it's not 21 days of trying to do something different or trying to force <laughs> yourself to quit. For you, what would be an example of a technique that you use with your clients? Yeah. So this whole thing of, of, and I love the desire to know a technique, but it's almost like I, Mr. Miyagi, catch that with my yeah. chopsticks because it's right. like, everyone wants yeah. the technique. <laughs> everyone wants the technique. Right. There's no technique. Right. If we can tap into what it is that's created in your world without you thinking about it, and we can make small adjustments there, then things can happen without you thinking about it that are more in align with what you actually want. Right. We're just hacking the system. So Brianna, tell us a bit about your backstory and what led to you all the in-between of what led to you being a soul coach and a healer. Okay, <laughs> let's see. So there's a lot. I have a lineage of very strong family structure, um, traditional backgrounds, all of them based in the earth, mostly farmers. I come from mostly farmers. And so from a young age, I really loved speaking to the plants. And I had a deep relationship with aloe vera at a young age. We grew some in our backyard and it was like, I would play with it like a magical plant. My mom told me, you know, it's good for sunburns. You could eat it when your belly hurts. It's good for your hair. It's... So I was playing with the plants from a young age and connecting with them. I wasn't really into the princess archetype and, and that's okay, but I was much more connected with, with the witch archetype mm -hmm. and really understanding the power of words and spells. Around 13, 14, I discovered um, my emotional range, right? Like I started to really step into puberty and I've always been a very sensitive child. I, just, I remember specifically saying that. I want to not feel so much. I feel too much. And I got a lot of feedback around that. Brianna, you're too much. You're being too much right now. Can we calm it down? Can we just, I, I can't handle you. you right now, yeah. right? Like most of us, I think, who were considered dramatic, were hyper empaths. Right. We're feeling more than just our experience. And around that time I was a dancer. And one of the things I got introduced to was bulimia. It allowed me to shorten the span of what I could feel during a time where if I was truly feeling, I'm pretty sure I would have committed suicide. Yeah. Was that bulimia then what led to your to you realizing, oh my gosh, I have a gift? Even when the behavior started, I think there was immediately a knowing that um, something was missing, like this is not normal, this is not how I want to be, this is uh, a reaction to pain. So I really went to therapy and like really sat down and was like, okay, I'm ready to do this. And I took my first meditation class. And I said, you know, this assignment for sitting for 20 minutes by ourselves, like I think meditation's cool, I think it's for some people, definitely not for me. And the thing that was happening when I was sitting silent with myself was I was starting to notice my thoughts would not stop could not stop, like I could not sit still with my body. And so she really made me push through kind of my first internal barriers that were not necessarily achievement based. Yeah. I was 
very type A, four star necessary kind of personality, really presenting as got it all together, right? right. Um, Sounds familiar. Yeah. So meditation was a time where I had to confront myself. I had to get honest with the fact that I didn't have my shit together, mm -hmm. that I was a hypocrite, and that all of my ideas about saving the world and supporting other people and really being a change and being a voice for the evolution of humanity meant nothing if I didn't know how to treat myself well. Yeah. At that point, were you like, I'm going to school for NLP? Basically, what it came down to was I ended up doing a yoga teacher training and then moved to Costa Rica to teach yoga. While I was yes. there, some Sequoia elders from Ecuador were there. And this was 10 years ago, actually, March of 2008, wow. the first time that I sat with one of my plant master teachers, Ayahuasca. Okay, what was that like? It wasn't like anything. No? Nothing, nothing <laughs> like it in the whole world. But, I've got so many I've things known. I want to ask and my brain is going to explode. <laughs> to be super clear, like Ayahuasca is my spiritual path, right? Like mm. this medicine the first time that I sat with it, it was very clear that there was an essence, that there was a spirit. And the first time that she spoke to me was the first time that I sat with her and she made it very clear that I was gonna be a part of her coming to people. And so I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I did know that I was gonna have a lifelong relationship with her. So for me, wow. this is a spiritual path. This is not an experience, and it's not a one-time experience from the traditions that it comes from. The peoples of this area believe that it's here to help us heal our hearts. Mm. Right? That the West, they're considered the eagle, right? The North um, is sick. That their hearts are sick. And the condor, which represents the heart, the South America, has a medicine mm -hmm. called yaje, called ayahuasca, that helps us open our hearts. And is it scary? Is it painful? Yeah. Look at our culture. Look how disconnected we are from each other. Yeah. Children are killing children. Race war is back, gender war is back. So even if we're not the ones causing the problem, just living in this culture yeah. is heavy right now. Mm. And this medicine is here to help us remember who we are. Mm. What do you say to the people who, who claim it, it's not medicine, it's a drug? How do you, and some who, like me, I thought it was subjective. Was it made in a laboratory? No. <laughs> Yay, that's pretty much it. Um, so drugs are something that are made in a laboratory where you're taking multiple different compounds and compressing them into something to address specific symptoms. So the clear distinction between drug and medicine is if it's being used for healing purposes. Is there anything to really be afraid of? Because on, on a health level. There is nothing in it that is toxic other than um, Unlike some other plant medicines like psilocybin, uh, mescaline-based medicines like peyote and huachuma, um, and even Santa Maria, they all have some, or, or cannabis, they all have certain toxicity that happens build up in the body over time. It's a vine, the ayahuasca vine. Aya means soul, huasca means vine. And then the leaf, which is chacruna, uh, Psychotria verdis, um, and that is what holds all the DMT. We have DMT in our pineal gland that can be released at near-death experiences or what I like to call near-life experiences when a woman is giving birth or a baby is going through the birth canal. Um, and this DMT is released and then we have monoamine oxidase which comes out of our intestine and eats it like a Pac-Man. So your DMT experience only happens for 0.5 seconds or really? flash before your eyes. Okay. Yeah, right. But okay. in ayahuasca, in the vine, it has an inhibitor. So you not stays. only get the DMT from the leaf, you also get to experience your own DMT. Wow. Interesting. Fascinating, oh right? Yeah. Here's the thing is it can speed up your heart rate. If someone has kidney or liver issues, it's a detoxifying medicine. So you want to be careful. Yeah, yeah. Also, if anyone's on any SSRIs or... Um, any sort of serotonin related mm -hmm. medication, you would want to check with your doctor or check yeah. with the facilitator who's holding the medicine. This is not something to be taken Mess lightly. Right. Mm -hmm. This is not something to be taken lightly. It is one of the strongest purgative medicine. You will purge one way or another, not only physical toxins, but psycho-spiritual that gets wow. stuck in our body. It'll yeah. go in and you'll have an emotional experience as you're purging, right? Yeah. Like we're also, learning how to pray again. We're also learning how to enter into an intention field. We're also learning how to enter into a community where the intention is healing. So the medicine itself, yes, is definitely part of that, but it's also to enter into the plant medicine world is to enter into a community where we pray together. Whether there's something else helping us or not, I don't know, but I know prayer works. Right. Yes. So 
pray. Okay. It wasn't that the medicine was doing all the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. If you go into a ceremony and expect it to heal you, you're going to be horribly disappointed. Right. So go in heavily meditated into a plant medicine ceremony and it will support you. It's like a quartz crystal. It's an amplifier. This person had a bad trip. No, they amplified their internal yeah, experience. In, yeah. right. So those are the, those are key pieces to a ceremony. It's intention, prayer, intention, right? Having meditation, a spiritual practice, meditation, right? Knowing your facilitator, mm -hmm. yes. knowing the set and setting where it's going to be. That's very, very important. Yes. And then having a community and having conversation with your facilitator about integration afterwards. Right. Vital. Got it. Perfect. You should be fully loaded and ready if you wanted to. That's right. <laughs> Good information on Ayahuasca. I love that. For the people who can't see a healer, whether it's financial reasons, religious restrictions, what have you, what would you suggest if they want to see somebody like you but just don't have those resources? We have the most incredible thing on the planet right now, like our iPhones, right? Our smartphones. And, and until we get our third iPhones up and running fully, <laughs> like we've got something to intermediate, right? We got the Google. Like seriously, go on YouTube. There are so many amazing Reiki healers, EFT, tappers, neuro-linguistic programming practitioners. And if you personally write someone who is in the healing field and, and they feel you, they will respond to you. Yeah. They will respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. For me at the moment, I'm struggling between the fine line of being exactly who I am, for instance, in the industry or whatever situation, being Charlie Travers, whatever that looks like, mm -hmm. but then playing the game, like being smart with social media or how much I put myself out there or things like that. So I wanted to ask you how you, what your thoughts on that are or how you would balance that. that well, harmony, signal. right? Like there's really no harmony. such thing as balance. Like, cause it's balance is I'm unbalanced on one side that's or another, true. right? Like it's, you never, never, can be it's exactly. never like, yeah. Yeah. it's just it's not, that's, life is not that. Yeah. Yeah. We are living what's, what, what the Indian tradition calls the householder lives. Uh. We're kind of in a place where we can touch spirituality. We're definitely not starving, but we're not in the 1% and yeah. we're in this middle zone where we have to navigate. So yeah. there's no such thing as balance, but there's harmony, right? Mm. You've got your tenor, you've got your alto, you've got your bass. Like you just kind of get them to all sing together and yeah. like it can really get into a groovy space and like they can start to sound good together, right? Yeah. Instead of being like, fuck, why is the bass here again? It's like, no, you just need to bring in some alto to help balance that yeah. out. Oh, okay, cool. Oh my God, why am I stressed out again? It's just, you need to bring in some chocolate. You're cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. just start to learn that it's harmony and not trying to achieve bing because yeah. very unlikely any of us are going to be enlightened in this lifetime, we need to stick around. Right. So I feel that same way about the social media world. Insert yourself as much as it feels good for you. Mm -hmm. Go as slow as the slowest parts of you want to go and share your message unabashedly. How do I be this fearless woman that is just owning who I am and feeling, going with how I feel, but not coming at the expense of, of anyone else or hurting other people? I'm struggling with that as well right now. Yeah, slow down. <laughs> oh, <she> goes, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, you know what I mean? Like showing up and being this empowered woman, we have so much pressure to mm. be this. You're there. Mm. Like you're already it. If you're hurting other people or steamrolling them with who you are, it's because you're moving too fast. Mm -hmm. Slow down. Mm -hmm. Really ask yourself, is this who I am or am I reacting to something? Right. Because the, the, the isness of your beingness, right? is a deeply loving, deeply caring, deeply compassionate soul that cannot not take into consideration other people. That makes perfect sense. I mean. <laughs> okay, what is your biggest fear before we go? What fear and how do you overcome it? Yeah, it's like a, the burning at the stake kind of fear of like, if I really put myself out there, really coming out as a evolutionary of, I believe the way that we can solve our existential and also actual crisis of the heart is by reconnecting with individuals, reconnecting with ourselves. Um, sometimes I get afraid that that movement getting really big is going to send like, ah, into like a whole. Yeah. But Amazing. even as I say it, it feels kind of silly. I'm like, oh, how egotistical am I thinking that I'm going to make that big of a ripple that anyone's even going to notice me? Well, but so why would it be a bad thing? Yeah. What if it's yeah. amazing? What if everybody feels that way? You're the poster child for it. Maybe. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, you are so inspiring. Oh, thank you. I'm going to take a lot away from today, and I hope that you guys do too. You're a really amazing woman. Agreed. Thank if you could so say, nice want to say one thing to our viewers, anything at all? Um, really start to notice how you communicate with yourself. 
the language that you're using with yourself. When you do something great, do you take a moment to celebrate yourself? When you do something wrong, what is the statement that immediately comes to mind? Just starting to notice on a very simple level the way that you're communicating and loving or not loving yourself is a really good place to start. Thank you so much. Thank you Thanks again, Brianna Lynn. My Please. pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely oh, adore you. Where can the fans find you? So my name is Brianna Lynn on Facebook, but the best way to get in contact with me is through my website, which is whole life with a W and L P dot Amazing. Whole life <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so Thank much. you for joining us. Yeah.